All right, so very interesting video today. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit more in depth about what does the word net do and what does the word net corpus actually mean. So if you know that corpus is a collection of uh, items or I would say collection of things. So corporations are how the word is formed. So what exactly does the word net do and uh, what is the use of that you know, probably in, the, in terms of natural language processing. So if you see that the actual reason behind creating a database of lexical analysis or lexical scopes is to give a context to the sentence that we are saying now it, it like i said i've been saying throughout the entire series word net is not something that just got formed on a single day uh, it's been there for decades it's been an open source project where it gets added again and again there are a few private projects that are few open source projects so it's just a collection of all of that and uh, if you see that it's a lexical database which has a ton of different words and sentences that are being used in natural languages not just for one language like english you can have you can find there is a database for multiple languages as well so what exactly does this lexical relation mean is what i'm going to be trying to give you guys as part of this uh, slide so if you see in the example i've given here i've said that i ride a bike is different from i was riding a bike true right so the lexical relation is that the bike the is the entity here meaning that it's the thing that is being used the actor is me i am the actor here and i'm doing some action which is ride and riding so all this information is correctly mapped inside the word net. Now, if I, if I use a word like I ride a bike tomorrow, you know, that word makes no lexical meaning. I ride a bike tomorrow. I will ride a bike tomorrow makes sense. I ride a bike tomorrow. It doesn't make any sense, right? So that's what exactly happens when you are uh, trying to form lexical relations. Lexical relations doesn't mean just forming a sentence. It could even mean forming a word that word can be put anywhere and it could have different meanings. Uh, in the previous video, I gave the example of jump, jumping to conclusion. I'm very sad because I jumped to conclusion. And that could be another sentence like I, I'm jumping up and down out of joy. You know, the jump is used differently. It is denoting different entity in every single sentence. And similarly, there are a lot of words like that. And all of these relations are mapped in the word net, which is again a lexical database. So if you see that it does not only have the words and lexical scopes and lexical relations, it also has the, cons the yeah, synonyms, the antonyms, you have allonyms and meronyms. So all of these are just the English, uh, or I would say the English, not just the English, probably even any kind of a language will have an opposite word. It will have the same word. So all of these are possible through the word net. It will have meaning, it will have relations to that also. And finally, it will also, if you go deeper into it, you can even find the verb form the noun form the adjective form the adverb form of different words can also be seen as part of data net if you go dig in deeper and um, it's a very very huge and vast kind of a uh, kind of an open source uh, database and the use of that is to obviously keep on increasing the increasing the entity increasing the relationship between words so that as as we grow as the machines grow they can even understand any complex sentences like how we me and you speak so that's the whole idea behind using the word net and uh, it's still it, it, you can say that it is always growing and it'll always keep keep on growing as well so let's go into the next slide which is obviously i want to show a simple example of how you pull out data from a word net how you can find a synonym to a word how you can find an antonym to a word which is going to be what you're going to be seeing as part of this code example all right so previously video we saw talked about lemmatizers and i'm just talked much deeper about how you do normalization and all of that so let me create a simple file i'll call it as a data net anno and sino as always let's go with a sentence and i'll show you guys how these sentences can be useful and always you understand that um, the sentences needn't always make sense it could be even a wrong sentence so there was this one question in my previous video like what happens if i give a wrong question or the wrong sentence which doesn't make sense will the computer understand that which is a very good question actually so the answer for that is that it can your sentences needn't always be a perfect match uh, to any kind of a lexical relation 
like i said i i ride a bike tomorrow is a very badly formed sentence but does does that does it give you an understanding of what i'm trying to say like does it give you an understanding of what i'm trying to convey yes it does and the these words are, are being used not in a very strict form it doesn't mean that i have to always speak grammatically correct every single word to be able to be recognized by the computer it doesn't work that way it is always a percentage match how closer am i to giving the best possible output how closer am i to be giving the best possible answer or even say i would of best possible uh, relation to the single word is what is being seen so i ride a bike tomorrow will still be perceived as okay this person is going to try and ride a bike tomorrow so that's how the computer is going to perceive as you go through this dramatization and stemming and probably even chunking techniques and as your model grows if you have a very cost sophisticated model which can parse any kind of sentence throughout the world you know any kind of it you understand the meaning for all of that but then in that case it will also include a percentage of error uh, which will be like maybe 0.05% uh, the sentence might be wrong is what is trying to say so that can be 100% of uh, that is no till now there is no 100% exact parsers or i would say processing techniques available it's always going to be a percentage of error associated with things and it's also how humans speak so uh, that's being included into all these algorithms so right so let's go into the data net uh, and see what are the words that are available for us but before that let's form a simple sentence and when i say simple sentence again it's uh, it needn't always make sense like i said so i'm going to be forming sentences or words like uh, skiing i have never done skiing so i don't even know the what's the skiing skiing uh jump and probably sock socks cool i don't even know what does that mean like i don't even know if the skiing word is uh, alphabetically correct all right so let's go into this one uh this is going to be the sentence i'm going to tokenize it in some time but before that we need to import statements import nltk and also import the next which is a very important one which is the nltk.corpus the corpus is where the entire corporation i would say the corpus of data is held and i'm going to be inverting in uh, importing the word net through from that and i can do that by just doing import word net i'm doing a simple mistake here it should be from nltk corpus import word net all right so i'm just saying import the entire word net from the corpus and um, we can just do a simple print to see how many words are there and we i'm not going to do all that so let's go into this uh, sentence and tokenize it and see how we can be used to find synonyms and uh, probably antonyms throughout this one so what we can do now is that go and do a simple token and token is equal to nltk dot word tokenize sentence and we have the token so we'll just print the token so that it's useful for us i'll call it tokens all right now we're going to loop through this token and try to find uh, the antonym and synonym for all of that so we're going to be looking through the tokens and we're going to be doing something called as forming the synonym network of that synonym sets so if you get the synonym sets and from that you can find the synonym antonym sets and you can find the synonym sets so what i what exactly i'm trying to say is that every token is part of a set of words so if you want to find the set of words you just have to loop through that and get the synonym net synonym sets so let's do a syn sets is equal to word net dot syn sets so i'm saying that from the word net of the synonym sets find the token Uh, we've got the syn sets. Uh, we've got. We've understood what the syn set, and we cannot directly just do uh, syn sets print. If you do syn sets print, let's see what happens, and uh, we can find that. Mess my mouse. Okay. it just means nothing for us at this point it just has a lot of words if you can see uh, the word uh, skiing is uh, ski cool, cool for me with the word jump has leap jump startle jump again jump and jump so there's a multiple versions of those jump and also if you go for the sock it says wind sock sock like that so basically we have already gotten the set 
from which this is being pulled out from so whatever set has the word uh, jump it's being pulled it out it's, it's pulling it out from that but we cannot just go again and just leave it at that we want only the i would say probably the words that are lemmatized words so i just have to do is that since sets dot lemma if i put since sets dot lemma it will just print only those words for me now i cannot just do since sets dot lemma because it's going to be a set of value so i need to assign it to a variable and then i can print it so i'll just do it's that i can do for sin in sin sets i can do a print sin dot lemma awesome right just it just gave me the entire thing out of my head it is giving the every lemma that is available for that simple synonym so example is leap it's giving leap or jump it's leap in saltation i don't even know what that means startle 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 jump startle start so so i'm um, one next i'm going to do is just not just leave it at this rather i'm going to be uh, appending this to a simple variable or i can loop through the lemmas again to find my names only so i'm going to do is that lemma in sin dot lemmas i'm going to now do print lemma dot name if i say that it's going to just print the name only and not worry about the rest of the things so if you can see for yourself all right got it so it's printing all the words that are there uh, printing all the words all the words that are uh, corresponding to these three words only now let me do just the jump alone so that you guys can see it for yourself still there are a lot of words right jump jump alternate ski skip over parachute now let's say that i'm very I'm, I'm i'm actually not uh, a big fan of repeating words now I, all i need to do is just add to a simple um, maybe a list i can do a synonyms i can do synonyms equal to list of i can just do this or i can create it as a set and it will automatically add only those words that are not there simple technique so okay i need to print it right i can come out and do a simple print if you print it it will just give me all the words that are just available only once so jump out is one skip is jumping shoot pass over saltation so only once is that word used and uh, that words are only going to be found as my synonym so i have this my synonym for just one word like jump and similarly you can even find the antonym from your sin sets when you have once you have the sin sets you can instead of finding the uh, synonym you can even do an antonym off and you'll get your antonyms right out of the bat and pretty much how you can use the word net to your advantage you can find a lot of things available you can you, like i just showed you there are about tons and tons of lexical relationships ships for every single word so think about how huge it is and um, there's also the additional complexity of language associated with it so basically that's how you're using your word net and you're understanding different concepts and different things and you are also doing your parsing techniques so basically that's it for this video again i hope you guys had a good understanding of word nets and how to use those word nets to find synonyms and that's it for this video let me meet you in the next one until then bharat peace out have a super awesome day